This video is sponsored by Hotspot Shield, a VPN to protect your privacy, data and freedom to browse censored websites. Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and in this video I'm going to be demonstrating to you just how important it is to calibrate your monitor or display. And for this particular video I'm going to be using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro. Now there are plenty of monitor calibrators on the market nowadays. I chose this one because it offers up options for some presets for video work. And the monitor in question is this, the LG 34UM95P. And you can see it at the moment in its uncalibrated form. So let's get the software installed, the hardware installed, and then take a look at a before and after. So let's start by having a quick look inside the box. Now this is the X-Rite i1 Display Pro. And you can use it to actually calibrate a computer screen or even a television screen, even a projector as well. And it also has an ambient light sensor. So once you've actually calibrated your display, you can leave this on your desk near to your monitor and it will continually recalibrate. It will actually look at the ambient light and adjust your display accordingly. Around the back, it just lists off some of the other specifications. I'm not gonna go through those in this particular video. They're all, all available online. And I'll leave a couple of links in the video description as to where you can find out more about this product. So let's unbox this and have a look at what we get inside. So we have got the software for both Windows and Mac supplied on a disc. Well, we're going to be actually downloading the latest version of this anyway. So we'll pop that back inside the box. We've also got a quick start guide, which is just going to guide us through getting it up and running nice and quickly. So we'll keep that handy. And then inside this main packaging, we have got the calibrator itself. It's a very compact design, looks really nice. And it's got a, quite a long cable as well to obviously stretch around the back to your computer. It's a USB connection on this end here. And it's got an integrated weight. This is very important because this weight here is what you're gonna hang around the back of your display to actually give some stability to the calibrator which is gonna be on the front of your screen. And then this is the actual uh, i1 Display Pro itself. Really neat little solution. It's also got a tripod mount as well so you can mount it in your room for ambient light measurements. And then this is how it's gonna sit on the desk. I think, if memory serves me right, this rotates round and here you can see the actual calibration lens just in here. This is what's actually going to be pointing towards your screen throughout the calibration process. So I've downloaded and installed the latest version of the i1 profiler software off of the X-Rite website and I've got that installed on my late 2013 Mac Pro which is situated underneath the desk here. And I've also connected the i1 Display Pro calibrator via USB. You'll see this here, this is the weight that I showed you when I was unboxing the product. And this is to counteract the, the weight of the profiler whilst it is on the front of your, your monitor. Now I wanted you to see this real time just so you get to see how difficult or easy it is to set up. Before I play with the weight and get things set up with the calibrator, I'll just let you know that there is an advanced mode and a basic mode on the software, and I'm gonna be running it in the basic mode just for ease of this demonstration. So let's get this ready. I'm gonna actually move the weight down straight away. So I'm gonna push the button in and move this down the cord. It seems to be very stiff at first. There we go, so it's now moving down the cord a little bit. And then this is actually in ambient light mode at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is just click this up and move this round to this position here. And this exposes the calibrator for using on the screen. And it's not hard plastic. There is some little foam sort of padding around this. So it's not gonna damage your screen when it's touching the screen surface. And now I'm just gonna run this wire around the back of the display and just pop this to one side for now because I'm not going to actually put it in the, the correct position yet. I want to see what I'm doing with the software. There we go. So now let's have a look at the software. So I can select between display profiling, projector, printer or scanning. So I'm going to actually do display profiling. And it's asking me to select the display and the technology type. Well, I'm profiling this one, the 34UM95 from LG and it's given me an option of CCFL, wide gamut CCFL, white LED, RGB LED, 
OLED, plasma, RG phosphor and projector. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be RGB LED. So I've selected the type of display here. Also the white point, which I'm going to leave at the default, which is D65. And also the luminance, which uh, I'm going to select 120, which is the default as well. There's also an ambient light smart control, which adjusts the profile based on my ambient light. Now, I'm not going to select that at the moment, purely because I've got my studio lights on and I don't usually have my studio lights on whilst I'm just editing. I only have them on when I'm recording. So my colour calibration is important when I'm working in a normal work environment. So I'm going to leave that as is. So let's select start measurement. And now this is the right mode. So now it's actually prompting me to put the display at a slight angle. So for best results, be sure the measurement device is resting flat on the display and then click OK. So it's just saying that the display needs to be at an angle so that this particular measurement device lays flat. So I'm just going to tilt it back slightly because that in my previous experience has helped a great deal. And then I'm just going to place the calibrator on the screen like so and just check that it is in fact flat on the screen. So I'm looking side on and there's no gaps in the calibrator so that's good. And then I'm going to click OK to get rid of that message. And then on the it's not actually getting rid of the message so it says don't show this message to me again. OK so we say OK don't show it again. OK and that gets rid of that warning in the top corner. And now it's asking me to actually get ready to calibrate. So I've got uh, on step three here, I've got to choose the settings that are manually adjustable on your display. So contrast is, brightness is as well, because I remember seeing that. I'm just going to pop the menu up and just see if RGB is actually selectable down here. Well, I've got brightness control, I've got contrast, but as you can see, if I go through all of these menus on my screen, I cannot manually configure the RGB elements of this screen. So I'm going to say no to that one. And then brightness I can. And then we click next. And now I'm hoping that it should be going into the calibration mode. So it's going to run through various sort of um, settings and various screens. It's going to shine into the calibrator to calibrate my screen. It's quite good actually, because at this stage you can see that I had my menu on the right hand panel of the display. The actual profiling is actually going on in the centre of the display. Now as far as I know, the uh, hardware does have the option to measure uniformity of the backlight on your display as well. So it should prompt me at some stage to measure separate points on the screen, maybe in these corners or in these corners. So we'll see if that happens during the profiling process. Okay, so we've now got to a stage where it's finished the initial calibration and it's asking me to put the ambient light diffuser back over the lens. So I'm going to remove this from the display and pull this back round into view. And what it's basically saying is to click this round and place this back over the lens into this position. So this is now in ambient light mode. So you can actually place this somewhere near your display on the desk, just here, and that will allow it to actually measure the ambient light. Now, once I finish the calibration, I'll, I'll take this out of shot and place it a little bit further away from the display. But for now, we'll leave it in that position and we're going to click next. Now there is an instruction page that you can actually uh, click on and gain access to, but I'm just going to click next and, and go with what it's done. So apparently this is now calibrated, so we should be seeing a calibrated image. And it says here, uh, duh, 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 duh. so we, we don't need to click start measurement, we're going to click next. And it's now asking me to name the profile for this monitor. So we're going to just leave it at the default here. Uh, profile distribution, so I can either um, make it available just to the user that's signed in or available at system level, but it says that's not writable at the moment. So there's obviously some permissions issue with that. Profile reminder, so I can tell it to remind me to reprofile the screen at a one week, 
to two week or three week or four week interval. So I'm gonna get it to remind me every two weeks. Ambient light monitoring, I can actually switch to on, automatic or user notify. Now automatic will recalibrate the display for various lighting conditions or user notify will actually notify me when the lighting conditions or the uh, display calibration is off enough for me to recalibrate. So I'm gonna set it to automatic. I'm gonna trust the hardware and I'm going to set it to check every 60 minutes. I can choose 10, 30 or 60 minutes on this particular dropdown. And then I'm going to say create and save profile. The profile and ambient light monitoring require the profiler tray application to run continuously. So it's just warning me that there's gonna be a profiling tray in my dock, the icon that's appeared here is going to run continuously. So I'm gonna say, yep, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Don't show me that message again. And then it's giving me a little window where I can actually compare the profiles. So let's have a look what it's saying here. It's saying before and after. Okay, so this would be interesting. So we've got a before setting, which shows me my pictures in the background here changing as well. And we've also got an after setting. So when I click this, so now we're looking at profiled and non-profiled. So profiled and non-profiled. Now what I'm seeing there, I'm not sure if this is coming across on camera, but I'm seeing the image look a lot flatter. So this has got much more punchy colors in. But in fact, when I go to the profiled image, it does look a lot more natural. These colors, especially in my face, the type of lighting I had when that photo was taken are a lot more accurate than the before profile. So I'm really happy with that. That's really good. I'm really pleased with how that looks. Now we've also got another drop down menu here. So we can see another picture in this window here. It's just given us different pictures to compare. So let's maybe go to something with browning. And again, we can go before and then after. Very difficult for you to see, but to me, that looks so, so much better. So we're gonna click home because we're done. This is giving me some options to actually register the software, which I'll do when I finish this video. But for now, I'm just gonna leave you with a look at these pictures. There is a big, big difference in the before and after. And I think that this is a fantastic investment because not only does it mean that this display is calibrated, but when I'm using my dual screen setup, I can ensure that the calibration is accurate across the two monitors or three monitors or four, however many you want to profile. So that's it for this video. This is the X-Rite i1 Display Pro. Just a disclaimer, this is not a review product. This was a personal purchase. This was an investment for me to ensure that I get some really good color accuracy in the videos and the photos that I'm editing. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button. If you feel that you can support the Geek and Noise channel, please do check out the link to my Patreon campaign in the video description, and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, there are two places you can find the subscribe button. On the main channel page, it's just up here in the top right hand corner. If you're on a video watch page, then you'll find it just underneath the video you've been watching. Click on the subscribe button and that means that you are now subscribed to the Geekanoids channel. But there is one more step you must take. Click on the little cog icon next to the subscribed button. Put a tick in the send me updates box and click save. Job done. Thank you very much for watching again. I'll see you next time.